Welcome to the Believe Podcast Network, SoCal Sweat. My name is Ann McDaniels, a former NFL cheerleader and product manager turned actress and model who dreams of being a UFC fighter. Meow. Learning strategies to help motivate others leads me to bring you interviews each week from a range of athletes, experts in fitness and nutrition, and so much more. Thanks for listening to Believe, the number one podcast for working professionals. And let's push our endorphins to higher performance through SoCal Sweat. This is your host, Ann McDaniels, and thank you so much for joining me on another episode of SoCal Sweat. Now, a lot of us were raised in environments where there was a lot of emphasis on physical appearance. I know that I certainly was. Everybody in my family had some kind of an obsession with physical appearance and all the discipline that went with it. Now, I am not a parent, but I have so much respect for those that are. And how do you raise your children properly in an age where body positivity and bullying and eating disorders and fitness are all over the place in the media and all around us? Now today, I am so excited to interview Britt Tafoya, who goes by Weight Warrior Woman. She's lost 85 pounds, and she coaches on food habit breakthroughs for others. She also has three beautiful daughters. And did I mention again that she lost 85 pounds? I was so interested in talking to Britt about how she concentrates on body positive and fitness and health and nutrition while not bringing her own former disorders of being addicted to diet pills onto her daughters. How does she instill a constant body positive image? Does she talk about herself? Does she make fun of herself? Does she talk about her former thighs or anything like that? No, she does not. She doesn't bring any of her past issues onto her three daughters and they are healthy and happy. Now after doing some research, I was very interested to find out what parents can do to instill a healthy environment with their kids in fitness and nutrition. There is a overlying dual fear of obesity or eating disorders, whether either one can be absorbed by their children. And just a few things to do is reassure that healthy bodies come in all shapes and sizes. Focus on healthy food that nourishes the body, besides concentrating on macros, fat grams, carbohydrates, what have you. Talk about healthy food that nourishes the body. Avoid weight talk about yourself or others. Do not talk about your own body image or give yourself a nickname or joke. Don't call yourself thunder thighs or anything of the kind or make fun of others. And if you suspect that your child is being bullied at school for their own eating disorders or weight issues, make sure to intervene and stop it as soon as you can. Number six, again, do not make fun of yourself, especially if you are overcoming some kind of diet or eating disorder from the past. Don't let your kids see your reflection on that. Number seven is focus on your children's accomplishments in social life, in academics, in sports, devoid of their physical appearance. And number eight is always model appropriate behavior because kids absorb everything. Say no to dieting and diet culture and yes to family meals. No to blaming parents for disorders and yes to always seeking help. It's always best to see pediatricians. And without further ado, I'm so excited again to bring on weight warrior woman, Britt Tafoya, who raises her beautiful three daughters in a healthy environment, despite the fact that she lost 85 pounds and was addicted to diet pills. Oh, I'm so excited to hear from Miss Britt Tafoya. How are you today in Colorado Springs? I'm great, Anne. How are you today? Good, thank you. Now, how how has COVID affected your business? Um, I'm going to say not too much because we're kind of just moving things around a bit and preparing for like a launch of our, uh, of one of our main programs, but I'm kind of transitioning it to a membership. So no effects, just kind of, you know, pivoting and, you know, taking life as it is. (laughs) Very good. And you have, um, I, I didn't, I just noticed the reset with power ebook 
Mm -hmm. is, this, is this an ebook or is this the program itself? Um, so it, it is kind of like an ebook, uh, but there's coaching audios actually in it. So it is kind of like a program too. It has the coaching element. I'm actually uh, transitioning that product to a membership. So it's going to have a full course kind of uh, presence and women are going to be able to log in and get new updates with menus, recipes and all that good stuff. So we're going to just kind of switch it up a bit and, you know, make it better. So that's what I'm actually working on right now. And is it going to be the same name, Reset With Power? The yes. Book, like membership? Okay, well, yes. very cool. Yes. Um, and we'll we'll highlight back again when you get that out completely and we can maybe do another thing on that. Oh, amazing. Um, so, Britt, tell me how you grew up um, in your childhood and your sports, your nutrition, what it was like in the household <laughs> and what you've taken, what you've learned, what you would do differently with your daughters today. Um, I'd love to hear your, your, just your, your upbringing. Well, first of all, there was no sports. <laughs> um, I was actually, I started having weight issues fairly young. Um, I started realizing that I looked a little different or uh, maybe other people realized that because I felt comfortable. I felt confident and comfortable in my body, you know, and then you'd start hearing the weight jokes when you're like in fifth grade. And so I started my first diet when I was in eighth grade and it was asparagus pills. So um, early on, I kind of realized that, you know, I, I have an issue here, like something's different about me. And I obviously wanted to be thin, like my classmates and all the pretty girls and all of that. Um, so it, it, it was a whole battle, um, up until, um, let's say my sophomore year, uh, the end of my sophomore year, I was about 16 and that's when I really, started learning how to crazy diet and I learned some crazy dieting behaviors but it helped me lose weight so that was the first time I lost a substantial amount of weight because I was about 200 pounds in high school and then I got all the way down to about 130 and I'm five nine and a half so oh my I was pretty thin you know but I was just doing what I thought you're supposed to do to lose weight you know and yeah. um and I mean I learned some crazy tricks <laughs> I would um, love to hear about some of the things you did because I want to do um a podcast on just the crazy diets like my mom was telling me about um it's called the AIDS diet where you eat caramels and coffee and that's all you do. It sounds delicious, but she said you can only eat like two a day. Mm -hmm. But she went on all kinds of things too. How did you know about the asparagus pills? Had you just done the research? Were other girls doing that? Well, um, that, and it was such a hard time anyway to, to be well, overweight. And no one years. else was really dieting. Like, like no one was do thinking about that stuff. It was, it was my... Uh, I, it was my personal issue. No one else was ex expressing, you know, body issues. Um, I grew up, you know, in a predominantly woman filled home, you know, and my grandmother, my mom, my aunties, like they're always talking about their weight. Um, my sister was always like, you know, she, she was blessed with like perfect calves and like all that good stuff. So she had the shape, you know, but I had the weight issue. And so I just kind of took, you know, from everyone I learned from my, the older people around me, like the stuff they said. And one thing they would always say, and they even say it till this day, um, my aunt swears that I don't eat. She's like, she's like, you're so thin, but it's because you don't eat. And I'm like, I eat, you know, but I took that uh, information that they gave me at a young age, like, you know, oh, she's thin. Oh yeah, she doesn't eat. You know what I mean? And so I really felt like, okay, if I'm going to be thin, like I can't eat, you know, that was the information that I had and it was consistent all around. Cause I can, I kept hearing it, you know, um, that was just the way that they spoke, you know? And so, uh, the asparagus pills, it was actually an ad. Do you remember like how you would get, um, these kind of like promotional ads in yes. the mail and it would have like, like an infomercial on a magazine kind of deal. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And so that's how I learned about it. And I convinced my grandma, I'm like, grandma, we have to get this so we can lose weight. Like it's going to work. I believe them, you know, and it showed the before and afters and everything. 
my grandma's like, okay, well, if I get this, you know, she's like, you're going to test it and see if it works. And if it works, we'll get some more. You know, I was like the <laughs> guinea pig. She's like, you right. know, I think she figured, well, it's just asparagus, you know, like what's the worst gap? Oh, that's so funny. And so I convinced my grandma to order me asparagus pills. And that was my first official attempt to lose weight. <laughs> wow. The first, the first thing I ever bought was, um, the breast increaser. Like you can take breast herbs uh -huh. to increase your breast size. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I was totally like, you guys, I'm going to have big boobs. I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. That is so interesting. And I, I hate to say it, but just your aunts or your aunties, you know, kind of saying she's too thin, she doesn't eat. Could that have been a jealousy thing? And then that could create some kind of animosity. But it sounds like you guys had a good group of women in the, you all supported each other, but with jokes. But sometimes that can go awry and there can be major jealousy in the family. Did you ever experience that and or with your group of friends that, you know, you, you lost weight in, in high school and you're absolutely gorgeous. I can't imagine. Oh, I mean, thank you. <laughs> sure, you were gorgeous the other way too. Did you have any negative feedback when you were sort of improving in your own, your confidence, although you never had, had bad confidence, you just looked stunning. Did people treat you differently? Um, I'll say that, you know, with the terminology that my family uses, that's just, I mean, it's just that old school just joking around. Yeah, yeah. That old school upbringing. Um, and it's a culture thing too, because I mean, there was really no information about being thin correctly. You know what I mean? I mean, we're talking the fin fin era, you know what I mean? And so coming out of that, I think that that was just their perception of the whole situation. Cause they really still feel that way. Even though I'm telling them it's not that way, they sure. really feel like they're going to have to starve to lose weight. So, I mean, that's embedded, that's, that's deep rooted. And so, I mean, having that as the foundation of my weight loss journey, you know, obviously you know, there's going to be some hiccups along the road just because I had to completely change my mindset around food. But going into like my transformation, I will say that, um, that I, I do feel like people in like high school treated me differently, you know, cause I did make, I made a pretty vast transformation and it was over summer and you know, it, it's so funny, but, um, you know, I kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm really kind of like a stay to yourself kind of gal, you know, um, I didn't really try to be around everyone, obviously, like, you know, people are going to look at you differently, because maybe you are mm -hmm. more attractive. Um, I met my husband, like shortly after that, which ah. he, knew me. he knew me when I was chunky, you know, and he That's always, even better. He, he, says, loved, he loved who you were. <laughs> oh, he says, oh, I loved your smile. <laughs> oh, he's a good guy. I love that. He likes yeah. a lot more of your smile now, I'm sure. Woo. <laughs> what, what does so, he yeah. do? Is he in the, um, in the um, fitness business at all? What does he do? No, no. Um, he's in sales and he does like, uh, like promotional and educational uh, oh, materials sure. and things like that for the military. So oh, very yeah, cool. he's a busy guy. Definitely. Well, it sounds like a really great family. And with yeah. that, you have two beautiful daughters, which we'll get to in a bit. But could you please tell me about, I mean, this is such a, a, a drastic change to your body. And then you were also going through like womanhood. I mean, you're growing mm -hmm. up as a woman from a little girl too during this time. Um, did you, were there still ups and downs or did you just kind of make a decision like cold turkey? Like I'm, I took these asparagus pills. I did this this way. Then did you learn about nutrition? Because clearly you with beautiful skin and hair, you clearly didn't, I don't think, abuse all the fen fen and, and the asparagus pills for much longer. Or did you? And then just find your way. <laughs> find your way back. Yeah. yeah. Um, so well, thank you. But um, so let's see. I started, okay, so asparagus didn't work. Okay. And then, you know, I did like the low carb thing that you saw on the back of a magazine, you know, 10 carbs a day. I think that was like something we seen on Cosmo, me and my sister. Yep. <laughs> and so we tried that. And then it was after my 16th birthday. Um, 
my birthday's in May, and I remember wearing this, uh, like, this pleather coat. Remember when pleather was, like, such a thing? <laughs> and so I had on this pleather kind of, it wasn't a trench. It went, you know, a little past my waist. And I had it on because I wanted to cover my arms. And it was so hot that day. And I had, like, a little barbecue. And it was my sweet 16. And I just felt so not how I wanted to feel. You know what I mean? Oh, I did yeah. not feel good. And um, I remember just feeling like, I don't know, like I didn't look like all the girls or, you know what I mean? I didn't feel good in my skin. It was the first time I really just did not feel good. And I was tired of it. I was just so sick and tired of it. And my mom had um, a magazine in her car and um, what kind of magazine? I feel like it was like Fitness RX or something. And on the back, there was an ad for Synodrin. Have you ever heard of Synodrin? Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's scary. Yeah. And so I saw this ad, this ad again, right? I'm falling for the yeah. ads. And I see this before and after, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I'm, I'm going to get this, and I'm going to transform. So I had so much money from my birthday. I went to GNC. I bought my Synodrin, and it was a wrap after that. I mean, yeah. So early on, I kind of started like, okay, like, you know, Synodrin that had like a Fedra in it, and, you know, yeah. and obviously at some point it's like, okay, I can't take this stuff. My stepmom actually realized that it was unhealthy and she like freaked out, takes me to the ER. They do like this x-ray and all this stuff. And, you know, and so I knew at that point, okay, I can't take this stuff. My Had step you been showing signs? I mean, were you sweating and were your, did you have heart palpitations? Like, no, why, no, no. I felt good. It was, it was working. You know, the science okay. behind ephedra, I mean, it's obviously controversial um, because right. everyone is different. You know what I mean? I do feel that I had some benefits, but do, I don't think that that was a way for a young girl to lose weight. Um, right. I don't know if I would have had the same, uh, effects. Yeah. The same effects without it. I'm not sure, but wow. I did also at that time, like start changing my behaviors. I, I was doing the not eating, right? Because the thing about it was it was making me not eat. Right. And so that's yeah. what I heard. Okay. If you don't eat, you know, then you'll lose weight. Cause that's what skinny people do. They don't eat, you know? So I thought everything was right. You know, like finally I cracked the system. We're going to do this, you know? Yeah. And so that's when I start realizing, okay, like I can't, you know, I can't keep doing this. And so I kind of took myself off of that, stopped using the, uh, the ephedra, but I mean, you know, there's, there's so many diet pills. And so then yep. I just find another one, like, Oh, maybe something better. I even think ephedra got banned. So that helped. I too. think it did as yeah, well. Yeah. Around that time. And right. so I started trying other things and, um, you know, I, I felt like, I think mentally when you lose weight on a pill and this is why you shouldn't at all, like people should not use diet pills. Um, as a crutch in their weight loss, because then they feel like they have to rely on that for their result and to keep it. Um, right. And so that was the hiccup that came up for me. And I think a lot of like all of the experiences I've had has made me connect to people in a whole nother way. Absolutely. Because, um, oh, one moment, hold on. Sure. I'm gonna take the scarf off anyway. Okay, sorry about that. Um, has made me uh, understand things from their perspective because I've been there too, you know? Absolutely. And I understand like so many women, they feel like they need like a pill, they need a magic pill, they need, you know, some tonic, something. And so um, having those experiences have helped me in so many ways. Um, because one, I I've been there and then, you know, I've had to, I've had to heal from those things mentally. Um, and you know, like having to heal my mindset, taking time to realize, you know, it's me doing the work, you know, it's me, yeah. you know, and like really just changing my perspective has just been a journey in itself. 
And so, um, so yeah, I had to learn that that was not the way. And then obviously I found something more unhealthy to do. (laughs) And so, and did you start taking nutrition classes at that point or how did you? No, no, no. So I was still, I mean, even after, um, even after the diet pill things, I started doing like, um, you know, like, no, like laxatives and like, um, the teas and things like that. Sensha. Um, yeah, the Senna. And so that was a journey. <laughs> that was a journey. And I mean, I really put myself completely, you know, down a rabbit hole. And it wasn't until I was about 25 years old that I realized you are doing this completely wrong. Like, you're not supposed to be taking care of yourself this way. I actually had a conviction in my spirit. And I really, because no one around me was saying anything, because I don't think that they even knew what I should be doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So how were they going to give me advice, right? And, um, Britt, during this time, were you fluctuating up and down like a roller coaster or were you just getting skinnier and skinnier? Um, um, so I was, I, I was getting skinnier and skinnier, but then at some point after like I had my daughter, um, I noticed that things got a little harder, you know, like it was a little harder to maintain. And, um, that is when like, say if I didn't have a diet pill or say I didn't drink my sanity, then, um, then my body would gain like 10 pounds in a day. And I'd be like freaking out, like, Oh my was gosh, that what in your mind do? or was that real? No, it was real. It was real. Like I was bloated, like all the things completely sure. uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, and then I'd be like, Oh, I got to go to GNC, you know, I got to go find a fix, you know, because, Absolutely. because I didn't have the fix. So that's why I was gaining. Right. In my mind, yes, um, sure. I didn't know at the, um, at the cellular level that <laughs> my body was like zapped, you know, but when you're so, I, I, I mean, we can all understand it as women, when you have an image, it's like, mm-hmm. you'll do whatever it takes to get there. Mm-hmm. That's fascinating. And I'm sure during pregnancy, besides after you had your first daughter, was that hard for you with the weight gain? I mean, I can't imagine um, struggling with that. Yeah. So when I did get pregnant with my daughter, that was odd. I mean, like having to go from starving to eating, right. To take care of myself. Yes. Yeah, sure. um, so that was a little hard, but you know, I got through it and, you know, I made sure my daughter was top priority. Um, yeah. cause obviously I was just going to fix it after the, you know, right. <laughs> you got to go to GNC for I sure. To, <laughs> oh, it's so interesting. It. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Oh my gosh. Were yeah. your, were your levels ever checked? Brit? Like, did, did they ever check your blood levels to see if you were off on certain things? Maybe the diet pills were taking over your iron levels or anything like that? Um, I didn't start getting deep into my health till way after. I think my daughter was probably okay. about like five or six years old by then. Okay. Um, and I was 25. And so, um, I, well, what happened was I started gaining weight and nothing was working. Nothing, nothing I was doing was helping me. My cycle yeah, you were stopped. doing the same thing. Yeah. Just like, kind of doing the same things, diet pills, uh, teas, yeah. you know, all those things. Um, and my body just was not losing weight. I was stuck and, um, I was bloated. I had no cycle. My stomach looked huge. Like every time I go into the doctors, they would think that I was like pregnant, you know, and they would tell me to take a pregnancy test. And I'm like, I'm not pregnant, you know? And yeah. that's when like, um, I really felt the conviction in my spirit for the first time, you know, it took, it took a really long time, but it was such a blessing. And I remember just like feeling, um, like God talking to me, like, this is not how you take care of your body. And he put that in my spirit. And once I felt that, I mean, there was just no turning back. There was like, I just knew it. And I decided like, I have to fix this. Like I have to heal. And he blessed me like about a year after that, he blessed me with twin girls. So I was still struggling, right? Like trying to understand. Um, I started losing the weight. My cycle started again. Um, I started eating more vegetables, um, not relying on anything. Um, 
I would do at home workouts. You know, I really started like being proactive in the journey, you know, going for runs and doing all of these things. And, um, I started losing that weight and then I got pregnant with my twins. And I remember like, I remember going through that journey and that journey for me was such a blessing because I feel like one, it proved to me that my body could do so much more. And if my body could produce twins and carry them full term, then my body could digest food, you know? And so it was such a blessing to me. And around that, like in that pregnancy too, because I mean, you have to like, when you're pregnant with twins, you have a goal of gaining 28 pounds by 28 weeks to ensure the baby's health. And so, um, so I was like, I'm going to gain these 28 pounds, you know, (laughs) for my baby. And it's going to be beautiful and you're going to love it. It's going to be healthy. Yes. Yes. And so I, during that pregnancy, I really took the time to reconnect with food, nourishing my body because it became, it was bigger than me. You know what I mean? And I was giving nourishment to two baby girls and I wanted my babies to be healthy. And I already felt that conviction in my spirit a year prior. So I knew, like, I felt like God was just like talking to me and showing me along the way. Yeah. And he really just like built my faith in ways I can't even explain. And so after I had my twin girls, um, I knew that that was it. There was no turning back. There was no going back to those old habits. It just wasn't even an option. And, you know, I was able to heal my relationship with food during my pregnancy and, you know, uh, heal my adrenals, heal my metabolism, like all of those things and just feed myself healthily. And then when it was time to give birth and, and, you know, try to get that, what is that? That snatched back. They call it. <laughs> yes. Um, I knew that I was going to do it right. And there was just no turning back. I started, uh, working on my personal training certification when I was pregnant with the twins. Cool. So I started having like that level of, you know, information and education. Yeah. So that helped a lot too. Um, and yeah, from there it was just, you know, it just went up. <laughs> Unbelievable. Congratulations yeah. on Thank that like, you. beautiful journey. Do you ever feel like if you have a down day or anything like that, do you ever feel like the need to go to GNC? Because it's almost like a, it's almost like a drug fix. It's almost like you, we need to see our dealers or something when, when <laughs> yeah. there's that much of a obsession with diet and weight and exercise. Mm-hmm. That's why it's such a billion dollar industry. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like GNC, you know, it's, yeah, it's like, you know, it's seriously. sometimes mm-hmm. and you see people in there sometimes where it's just like, there are 50 bottles and it's like, what, what is counteracting? What? I mean, this is just not good, but Mm -hmm. uh, do you, do you ever think when you have a, like, yeah, when you have a downtime, like, oh, I'm depressed. Do you ever think about it or is it all out of your head completely? That's so wonderful. Never, never. Um, you know, after I had my twins, I started getting into competing. Um, so I, I, I went into the whole bikini body and you're a um, lucky husband. Does he have any idea? <laughs> I mean, and it started with your, he liked your smile. Okay. Okay. That's awesome. That's what he says. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Very cool. um, yeah. So I think that, uh, what was your question? Hold on. I just well, so you went up. into, you went into competing right mm-hmm. after pregnancy. It's like, yeah. I mean, when, when a lot of women will go kind of down a slippery slope, you just kept, you know, improving. And well, what happened was, um, I remember when everyone found out I was pregnant with twins and they were just like, Oh, you're gonna like lose your body. You know, it's, it's a wrap, you know, that's like, everyone just told me that my best friend and she knows it too. When she found out she wished the twins on me. Cause when she found out I was pregnant, she's like, I bet you it's twins. And I'm like, what? Like, why would I have twins? You know? she wants you and, to gain weight <laughs> <laughs> and then and then so I found out I was having twins and then after she's like oh my gosh like you don't even know what's gonna happen to you after those twins oh, and I was like so really you funny. know so she lit that fire in me and I was just like yes. oh no you don't you know <laughs> uh, don't tell me what to do 
Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> so wow. that was kind of like my motivation. Like I was yes. gonna be a proactive mom in my health, and you but know you I was gonna were, compete. Was projected you. I mean, she mm-hmm. that was just a fire. You you were already getting there. Yeah, she's a firecracker, and she knows she knows what she's doing. You know, she was she was putting that in me. You know, like mm-hmm. don't don't you let yourself go now. You know. But, um, yeah, so that really helped me and I got into competing and that was an amazing journey in itself. And I also got out of competing too shortly after because I saw that everyone was doing everything I already did that I was healing from. (laughs) Exactly. And that was, that was bikini or figure you did. I was in bikini. Yes. Oh, so that's like the the leanest of the lean. So yes, yes, the leanest of the leans. And so I saw what everyone was doing and I was like, no, I already put too much time in healing from this stuff. And so that like when I say it was such a blessing that I already had those experiences and I was able to navigate away from that, you know, when I did get into uh competing, I was able to see like, you know what, I'm not gonna compete this way. My coach isn't going to have you know, that type of coaching, um, philosophy. Like I made sure I picked the coach that was right for me, but the environment was just too tempting for me at that time. And I knew I was fresh, like freshly healed. And so I was like, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get back. I'm, I'm gonna like take a step back. You know, I always say like, I'll probably start competing again in my forties, but, um, I think I just need it to be healed. I just need it to be in my healing and feel what that felt like because I never, ever had a healthy association with food. So I had to allow myself to have that. And then, so I got out and then I started, you know, studying nutrition. I became a certified nutritional therapist so I could get down to like the cellular level of food. And, um, and then I kind of reverse engineered my success, like what made me successful And then that's kind of like what I started implementing in my coaching and helping women and, you know, helping them transform. That's amazing. I'm also just extremely impressed that it's almost like an alcoholic walking into a bar. The fact that you went into that, into like such a high competition level where the supplements are known. I mean, I'm sure you saw people, maybe it was a natural competition, but were there people on steroids, like anabolics? I'm sure a lot of people were on anabolics. for sure there's people on steroids. And I mean, I think for me, the thing that kind of like made me like, whoa, was this girl was telling me she didn't have water for two days. And I'm like, what? Like, you know what I mean? At the end though, it's the only like, (laughs) I mean- so she hadn't for two days. Was this right, right before competition? Cause usually that's normal, but not, but not see, two, that's normal, though. right? That's normal. Yeah. That's yeah, the thing. Th- yeah. That's it, not yeah. normal for my health. Right. So I just knew it wasn't so much like, Oh, I know the methods work. Right. But it was yeah. just the, the, um, the, the thoughts about it just didn't seem right to me because I've just spent all this time healing and viewing food very differently. And so, I mean, if you're that restrictive with water, um, I don't know. I I just, I just remember sitting there and I'm like, what? And my coach wasn't that way. I had an amazing coach. Um, yes, he was so amazing. And, you know, I was drinking water, I was eating and, you know, I came in good and things were good, but I knew if I was going to get to a higher level at some point that there was going to be some type of compromise there. And I I didn't feel like I was ready for that. I didn't feel like it would have been healthy for me. And a lot of bodybuilders die young and there's a reason for it. And, but they love it so much that they're willing to sacrifice that. So Mm -hmm. I really commend you on that because that is difficult. I mean, thank you. you. You threw yourself in the lion's den and you were so smart about, and you were so self-efficient and reliant upon yourself and your own convictions and what's worked and what's not. And you also had a beautiful family at home and you probably thought for, for a bit, this just isn't me anymore. And you look just like those girls on the NPC stage anyway, you're just healthy. I don't want to rip on them. That's a whole Thank you. Thing. Thank but, you. So I, I just, I think it's unbelievable. I love these, I love these stories. So now that you have your business, what is your daily regimen with diet and fitness? And how did you get through, for example, the holidays with all the cravings? And, and what did you tell your clients when they want to reach for that fudge brownie? How do you coach them through 
I mean, I noticed you had wonderful uh, tips on Instagram, just like the alkaline water to like change the taste buds and things like that. But if someone's really, really struggling over and over and over again, um, how do you do the tough love? Because you know, you've been there and you've kind of done tough love with yourself. But at the end of the day, you know, you have to keep people accountable as a coach. Well, it's like, keep a food log. Well, then they log everything. Well, you're still gaining though. Did you really eat only that? Well, and then it comes out, well, I did go through McDonald's drive through and it was really late at night. They're not, some people are just not honest about themselves. How do you coach through these challenges of one of the biggest, again, billion dollar businesses of cravings in the nation, in the world, and we're kind of getting worse? Well, you know, from when I first began coaching, at first I would do the bikini body programs. That was like yeah. my thing. Like, Exciting. come glamorous. work with me. I'll get you the yeah. bikini body. You'll have your meal plan based on the grams. Like you're going to weigh your food, but you're going to be right. You know, that's how I that's first you have started. To do. Mm-hmm. Yep. But um, over time, I realized that, you know what? No one can just eat like this forever. And I knew that for myself. And so when I say I reverse engineered kind of like a program that has created the success in my life, um, I do think it's important to know how much your body needs. But first, before you can do that, you have to have an established relationship with taking care of your body. A lot of people, they go from never have taken care of their bodies to dieting. And when you do that, you're going to associate healthy food with the restriction mindset. You're going to associate healthy food with a diet mentality. And no, nourishment is actually the standard. You are actually responsible to take care of your body. That is your responsibility. And nourishment is number one. And so in my triple power method. Um, First, we deal with the nourishment. You need to know how to eat. You need to know how to take care of yourself consistently. You need to have the intuitive ability to choose foods that are nourishing your body. Just do that. Just reassociate yourself with good food. Do that. And then after that, we go into um, your precision phase. And that's when we're going to start talking about macros. That's when you're going to start looking at how maybe if you started your day with, um, you used to start your day off with, let's say a bowl of oatmeal, right? Well, what happens when you actually weigh that oatmeal and eat the right amount for your body and you add protein to that oatmeal so you can balance it out? Um, and say we take out that sugar and we put in like stevia to sweeten it. We take out the whole milk and maybe use some almond milk, Um, and so that's when we get into the precision phase and they start seeing like, oh, I'm nourishing my body, but now I'm getting precise and I'm seeing all these results. Right. So now it's like a great name for that second level. (laughs) So they're going through these phases to have that mind shift that's necessary for long-term weight loss. And then after that precision phase, we go into the freedom phase and the freedom phase is like, girl, do what you want to do but make sure your food is structured to what your body needs because you already went through precision. So now you have, you have that knowledge of knowing exactly where your body thrives at. But now I want you to go have fun and experience life while nourishing your body. Nourishing your body is numero uno. That's the first thing you're always going to do. That's the foundation of your life because you want to live and you want to be healthy and you want to look good. And it can still and be delicious. Good. It's not, yes. it doesn't have to be a rice cra- a rice cake. Exactly. And so once they go through that freedom phase, they start seeing like, oh, I can have ice cream. Um, if I have ice cream, I'm just going to kind of look for one that's maybe lower fat and it's going to just have maybe like. 20 something carbs, but then, you know what, I'll just skimp on carbs for dinner instead. And I'll just double up on veggies. And so they start incorporating their life. So it's a process of their mind shifting and reverse engineering this process. Um, I started like really looking at like, well, how did I get here? Like, what was the process? So what happened was I got pregnant. Remember with the twins, I started learning how to nourish my body, take care of my body. So I built that relationship again with my body. And then I got ready for competing. And so I had macros. I was weighing my food. I start seeing how my body was changing with 
the way I was nourishing it specifically to my needs. I saw who I can become, you know, like, (laughs) you know, get on that stage and look amazing by knowing exactly what my body needed to lose that weight. And then from there, I took all that knowledge and I'm like, okay, so I know that that's the foundation. Now let me put my life in here and start incorporating things I enjoy. So I always like to tell them, you know, always look for swaps. Like if you really truly love a meal, like say you love burgers, well then don't take burgers out of your life. You know, pick a leaner meat, get a, get a, maybe a lower carb bun. There's so many different options. Wrap your so bun in, many. wrap, wrap your uh, burger in lettuce. If you want to, you could do that too. Um, enjoy yourself, you know, eat good. And I feed my family the same way I eat. So I know it's good. <laughs> well, your food plans are beautiful. I was Thank so stuck you. on the, um, the stuffed salmon omelet, whatever it was, mm, uh-huh. it was like down in the middle of your feet. I'm like, Oh, amazing. <laughs> Thank I think, you. I think your program, Britt is so genius. And the fact that it really empires, it, it empowers someone to think for themselves. You're not being nasty about it. You're not shoving it down their throats. It's so sustainable. And yet they can, they can realize almost with a science what it's doing to their bodies. Mm-hmm. And I, love, I just love the empowerment Thank and um, the fact that you, is it intimidating? Because I, I talked to a trainer the other day who said in his program, he never even touches food in the beginning. He just says, I just want you to walk. I just want you to walk. Mm-hmm. He said, I found that so many of his, he said so many of his clients have, once he starts talking about food right, right off the beginning, they're like, oh, nope, nope, nope. But again, it's a, it's a man. Mm-hmm. So maybe, maybe the delivery is different. And, and again, not, this is not gender equality, gender equality, but yes. the fact that you are just softer in your approach because of your specific experience mm-hmm. and the fact that you're so approachable and warm that I feel like as a woman, if I were struggling, I would feel very comfortable telling you, well, Britt, I did cheat. And this is what, why, because of your, it, it's a dynamic warmth that comes no. from experience, reverse engineering and education. So I think it's a Thank really, you. you will continue to grow. And it's, it's that real, real person with sustainability coaching on how to get the power back. And I think it's really awesome. Thank and this you. takes your daughters that surely look up to their woman, their their woman, their mother, like a superhero woman. I, I just, I, I know how I looked at my mom all the time when she was just in such prime shape. And um, it really helped me uh, to this day. So it, you work out with them and it's so cool. And I've watched some of your reels and the, you incorporate everything with them. How do you, Britt, and maybe you haven't seen issues or, or my, but there are a lot of books out there on even within cultures of women, whether it be white, African-American, Hispanic, um, just the pressures of the culture and the mother to daughter. Mm. And um, it's all over the place. And how do you sort of educate your daughters in the perfect way as you are with your great food at home, but for them not to have a complex of a macro, but I don't think you probably do that in front of them because you really don't do that anymore. But how do you, how does your mindset not relate to them? Cause sometimes that can happen. Um, so they kind of went through that journey of me competing and they've seen like how I incorporate stuff, but I've always like showed them how fun taking care of your body is. So, um, you know, like we'll, we'll have dessert, that's fine, you know, but if we can make it healthier, then we always do that. Like we'll have root beer floats with Zevia instead of, you know, root beer. Um, but I always and tell them, you, oh, go ahead. Do you prepare, do you, I'm sorry, do you prepare it with them and show them what you're doing um, mm-hmm. just so they know how to prepare? Oh, yeah. that's so cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they know how to do all the things and they love, they love smoothies and all that good stuff. Um, but one thing I always tell them is it's fine to eat what you want. Like it's fine to have snacks and you know, chips and things like that, but you have to make sure you're putting good in. And I explained to them that when you eat something that's not providing your body with nourishment, it's 
extracting nourishment to digest it. So you're in a negative place. Your body doesn't have all the goodness it needs to feel so good. So if you're going to have like something like that, then I need you to double up on your veggies when it's time to eat some veggies or grab a fruit or, you know, you're going to have to make sure you get that in. And that's always just been the conversation that I've had and that I've shared with them. And I always make sure I tell them like, take care of yourself, nourish your body to give them the mindset of, I have to be proactive in my well-being. And so that's just something I've always implemented with them. And if I see them doing something that's like, like, what are you doing? That's a lot of sugar, you know? And, you know, I'll just tell them like, okay, make sure you get those veggies in or, you know what I mean? I let them know. Um, yeah. we, we don't do sodas in the house. We do water. Like they've had water like forever. <laughs> that's, that's their so drink. Great. Over <laughs> So great over fruit juice, which so many people feed to their kids all the time. Yes. When my kids get orange juice, it's, it's a turn up. It's a party. <laughs> They're like, yeah, Whoa. no, that's wonderful. <laughs> now, um, have you ever seen any of the same, maybe genetic qualities of the mindset of any of your daughters where that, whether they could have maybe been the same as you with a diet, you know, kind of like a process or an addiction? Um, um I have to say like, thank you, God. No. No. Thank you, God. Absolutely. That's yeah. wonderful because it's, a lot of times it can really very much be passed down. What if you were to see, um, what if one of your daughters were to come to you and say, hey, mom, I was at a birthday party and so-and-so was doing this and they saw a girl doing any kind of diet pills. How would you counsel them on that? Um, how would I? I mean, wow, they are going to get older. You know, yeah, I try to shield them from everything. Um, I think I would just really explain to them like what that person's doing to their body. Um, I try to be really straightforward in that way with my children um, when it comes to like health and things. So they have an understanding of the way their body functions. Um, And I would definitely let them know um, what the person could be doing to their body and how, you know, it's not helping, it's not helping yeah. them. It's harming them. And, you know, I think that would be a time where I would tell them my history and how I had to heal. And, you know, that's why mommy's like this. And I always try to, you know, help you guys understand that. And I don't have, I don't have weight conversations with my kids. Like I don't do the whole thing like, Oh, I'm fat or I feel fat or so wonderful. Um, so I wonderful. never that's- ever do that. Even if I feel it, huge. I keep it to myself. The most I will say is like, Oh, feeling a little thick today. You know, that's about it. You know, I don't like, but say, you do it in a fun you know, way. You don't yeah. you're not ripping on yourself. Yeah. Mom, I, I do not do that at all. all. Do you know how absolutely important that is? I, I mean, I, I, it's, it's like, it's huge. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I, I lived with that. So it just, <laughs> I think that's so, so responsible and Thank so many you. people don't do that. And I'm sure you, I'm sure you'll see it out in the school system when they go back to school and things like that too. So anyway, I think that's awesome. But you already, even if, even if they encounter a girl or a guy that's abusing any kind of pills, Mm -hmm. they already know the education because of their mother. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I think it's really, really cool. So again, you would counsel people on not ripping on yourself in front of your daughters or, or, or children. And I think that that's prime key while, while teaching them everything in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Now, how can we support you going forward? And I have to ask you too, have you had any kind of, what is your favorite cheat meal uh, or treat during COVID? Okay. Well, I don't call my cheats. I don't call them cheats Good for you. or treats. Good. I, I just usually call it like, um, in my program, it's to enjoy your day day, you know, just oh. relax and enjoy yourself, Love it. you know, cause Love you it. need to live your life, you know? Um, so for me, I, I pretty much eat what I want. I'm in the place where I eat what I want. I just structure it for my needs, you know, and I pay attention to how I feel and what I'm eating. Um, everyone is able to get to this place. If you are consistent and you are following, um, the triple power method, you will be able to get to a place of, um, eating what you want and just understanding food and not having that, like that feeling of like, Oh my gosh, like, I can't believe I ate that. Um, for me though, when I do just want to relax, um, 
what is like my favorite? See, I mentally, nothing feels bad to me anymore. You know what I mean? Because so I, great. I've changed my perspective with food. You know, I'm able yeah. to tailor everything to have success. So, um, I don't, I don't know. Um, if I want chocolate, I'll get lilies. You know, so sure, sure. you know what I mean. Well, and, like, and I think for you, every day, every day is a treat day because you're nourishing your body with things that you love. Exactly. So, yeah, and I love that you don't call it cheat day because it's just it's such a term used over and over and over again. Yeah. So one more time, if I can just go over, you have the three prong program. It's the nutrition, precision, and then onto freedom, and then a, a website with that or um, weightlossbybrit.com. Uh, okay. You could learn about reset with power there. Um, and uh, learn about my journey and you know any there's helpful recipes there's there's blog posts you know that are just so helpful with like uh, changing your lifestyle for good everything I do is for the long term I don't do any quick fixes the most quick fix I can give you is reset with power but it's really not a quick fix because it's changing your mindset for good so so we're doing it in a short amount of time. We're so like, I'm, I'm bringing the areas up to you. Like you have to fix this, you have to fix that. And I'm coaching people through that process and reset with power, but that's as quick as it's gonna get. And that's for the long haul, so. <laughs> I'm so excited to continue to support you. Oh, uh, thank Brit you. Brit Tafoya of Colorado Springs, thank you so very much. And she goes again on Instagram as Weight Warrior Woman. Yes. And boy, is she ever, she has a five nine, absolutely gorgeous woman who oh, really thank you talks about who's gone through a journey that is fascinating to me i mean and uh we wish you continued success thank, thank you so you, very Anne. much thank you so much for having me and that was weight warrior woman Britt tafoya who coaches others on food habit breakthroughs while instilling a healthy body positive outlook for her three daughters despite her former addiction to diet pills we appreciate you for listening and please subscribe and rate the show on itunes you can also listen on spotify stitcher google play luminary tuned in or at believe.com you can reach out to me for any questions or topics that you'd like covered on the show at ann mcdaniels and please stay tuned in for a very special valentine's day episode included in this week's podcast as well and I'll see you next time on So Cal.